you acknowledge when you get it wrong? Do you immediately admit the mistake, but follow it up with explanation and discussion and, and reviewing it all until you get back to the point that really you weren't wrong in the first place? Or maybe you go with the unaccountable option, that artful dodger that's a popular favorite among the Washington elite throughout time, and say, mistakes were made. Are you the kind of person that Samuel Goldwyn described when he said, I may not always be right, but I'm never wrong. Regardless of how you admit to others when you get it wrong, perhaps more important and more difficult is how you acknowledge it within yourself. Now, if you struggle with this, you are absolutely not alone. In fact, being wrong is a great fear for most people. Most of us avoid being wrong. We resent it, we resist it, even if it means being wrong about something negative, something we should want to be wrong about. Why is that? Psychologists have suggested that being wrong, it, it creates a sense of, of destroying our sense of self, that it relinquishes a feeling of power and control. And it really may not even be all our own fault. Our brain seems to work overtime to convince us that we are right, even in a situation where there is evidence to the contrary. So my aha moment about this came when I was just 17 years old. Now, my son recently went through that magical transition from 17 to 18, so I am acutely aware of the miracle that anything I learned at this age actually sunk in and has stuck with me. <laughs> because by and large, 17-year-olds are inherently and extraordinarily stupid. Now listen, I know that there is absolutely some, some people that don't fall into that category. I just know I'm not one of those people. If anything, it applied more to me. So I was 17 years old, I was a senior in high school, and I was in yet another argument with my mom. And once again, I was winning. As I mentioned, as a 17-year-old, I knew absolutely nothing, but I did know how to win an argument. I could pick apart someone's logic, prove my point, and win the fight. And this was no exception. The fight wrapped up, my mom left my room frustrated, and I was left alone to revel in my rightness. My internal celebration was cut short by a knock on the door. My mom walked back into my room, and our fight had been pretty heated, so previously, she'd been pretty emotional. Now, she was calm. She was clear. I was scared. <laughs> I will never forget what she said to me next. She said, Robin, you can win every argument, but it doesn't make you right, and it doesn't mean you'll learn anything. And then she just turned around, walked out of my room, and left me to deal with that truth. It was one of those paradigm-bending moments, because honestly, I didn't just win arguments. I had absolutely bought into my own press. I truly believed that because I won, I was right. Now all of a sudden I was left to question this. Maybe my mom's opinions and feedback and the things that she was telling me and her perception of the world, maybe they weren't actually wrong just because I could pick them apart. Maybe she was right. Maybe I was wrong. And maybe if I worried less about being right, I could actually learn some lessons. Perhaps those lessons were even worth trading in the smug satisfaction of being right. Now, I'm not going to lie to you. I still love being right. <laughs> and I still win pretty much any argument I choose to engage in. I'm in negotiation. It's a part of my job. However, I no longer equate winning with being right. This Awareness has made it that I can't blindly assume that that's the case. So whenever I find myself dug in, when I'm in some kind of a conflict and I feel fully secure that I am completely correct, I stop 
and I ask myself, what if I were wrong about this? What if it turned out I was wrong? What would there be here for me to learn? What would the lesson be? Now, I don't always outwardly admit that I might be wrong. My husband will attest to that one. But really, it doesn't even matter. The point isn't even if I am right or wrong. The point is evaluating if I were wrong, what's the lesson that would be here for me to learn? By exploring this, I'm able to pull more out of the conversation. I'm able to learn. I'm able to grow from the conflict. I'm able to find my own accountability and responsibility that we've escalated to this point of conflict. I'm able to, able to better empathize with the person that I'm talking with, and oftentimes, it completely diffuses the argument. Now, the skill of being willing to be wrong doesn't just apply to conflict. There are multiple avenues in our life where we are empowered if we are willing to be wrong. When we're brainstorming or collaborating, and we find ourselves stuck on one path, fixated on one idea being the right choice, by willing to be wrong about that being the right direction, we can better play devil's advocate against our own ideas. Even if no one is challenging the direction that we're looking to go, if we challenge that direction, we may give up the right choice for a better one. Being willing to be wrong also allows us to take bold action. If being right doesn't mean winning, then being wrong doesn't mean losing. When we are free of that fear of losing, we can move forward creatively. We can try things. We can experiment. It also allows us to stop when we're going down a path that really has shown it's not the best option. Rather than continuing to move blindly forward because we don't want to face the cognitive dissonance that we're wrong. This allows us to trade in doubling down on something that isn't working for the pivot. In the world of business, fortunes have been made on that pivot. One company that started out with a platform where you could search out and subscribe to different podcasts admitted they were wrong about the consumer drive for their product and their ability to compete with iTunes. So they threw it out to their employees to pivot. And that's how we ended up with Twitter. Another company started out with a robust check-in app with many different features and had to look up and say, we're wrong about this being the right format. They cut everything except for the photos, and Instagram was born. These innovations never would have been possible if the CEOs of those companies weren't willing to look up and say, we could be wrong about our original path, if they were blocked from moving forward. Perhaps the place that being wrong has had the highest impact in my personal life is when I decide I might be wrong about something I've decided about myself or about life. So I work with a business coach, and she remarked to me once that one of the major things that she has to work with people on is getting through their fixed beliefs so that they can move forward. And she said, you really don't seem to get jammed up in fixed beliefs. You should figure out who taught you not to build those fixed beliefs and thank them. As I reflected back on it, it went back to that argument with my mom. It went back to when I was 17 years old and had that aha moment. Here's why. When I'm looking at growing my life or my business in some way, and a limiting belief pops up, some thought, some doubt, like, I'm not good enough, I can't do that, I wouldn't be good at that, that wouldn't work, I ask myself, what if I was wrong about that? Then what would I do? What action would I take? By shifting that mindset, by asking myself what I would do if I was wrong, and then moving forward in that direction, I am able to get through without those limiting beliefs jamming me up. Dreams don't work unless we do. And so often, what prevents us from doing the work are those limiting beliefs. They paralyze us. So by asking yourself, what if I'm wrong about this belief, and then moving forward as though this was the case, you are able to continue to propel your dreams forward. So my challenge to you is this. Next time you feel yourself defending your position. 
Next time you find yourself completely secure that you are 100% right in a situation, whether it's a heated argument or a petty disagreement or maybe an internal conflict, stop and ask yourself, what if it turned out I was wrong about this? What lesson would be here for me to learn? What might I do differently? What actions might I take? And if it works for you, thank my mom. Heaven knows that decades later, she deserves to hear that she really was right all along. Thank you.